We are assembled here uh, to uh, introduce you to uh, our respective leadership teams in our uh, caucuses and uh, within our legislative bodies. Um, I am proud uh, to uh, disclose that today uh, my colleagues in the New Jersey General Assembly unanimously uh, voted for me to be the speaker uh, of the General Assembly in the 215th legislative session. Uh, joining me as part of the Assembly's leadership team will be Assemblyman Lou Greenwald, serving uh, admirably as my majority leader. Uh, Gordon Johnson from Bergen County will serve as the conference leader. And Speaker Pro Temp will be Assemblyman Jerry Green. Uh, Vincent Prieto from Hudson County will assume the leadership of our budget committee in our house uh, in that Assemblyman Greenwall has stepped uh, into another role. And uh, as you know, the speaker has the ability to appoint deputy speakers. I will appoint uh, and, and have appointed Assemblyman John Wisniewski into an expanded role and function as a deputy speaker. So uh, the members that I've identified to you, Lou Greenwall, Vincent Prieto, Jerry Green, Gordon Johnson, and John Wisniewski represent the new leadership team in the General Assembly. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. And I, I am very honored that my colleagues in my House unanimously supported my reelection to Senate President, unanimously supported Senator Weinberg for Majority Leader. Our leadership team is being rounded out by Senator Sarla, who did an outstanding job in the Budget Committee and our Senate Pro Tem, which is Nia, Nia Gill, who is not here right now, she had to leave. But it's, it's an honor and a thrill to have the support, the unanimous support of your caucus moving forward. We have gone through a tough two years. There was a lot of tough decisions that had to be made, not popular ones. They were made. We had differences of opinions as Democrats, we listened, to our, we listened to our colleagues and we moved forward. We've done the reforms the government needs to be done. Now we have to focus on what has not been done by this administration, which is the creation of jobs and fixing this economy. No one should think that we are not going to be extremely aggressive these next two years to start advancing our jobs package, helping the poor, the middle class and seniors that have been attacked by the in the first two years by this administration. And I am thrilled with my colleagues also, as the speaker is, and we are going to move forward in a very aggressive way to help the people of this state get back on their feet. Uh, speaker, do you want to say anything else? I kind of, um, and then we'll get our yeah, respective uh, leaders. I, you know, I, I can pretty much uh, project some of the things you have interest in knowing, and I think the Senate President touched upon it. You know, the past 23 uh, months, the Democratic majorities, uh, we started uh, this governor's term uh, seeking to join with him to identify and solve the problems that exist in this state. And I must say, to our credit for our respective bodies, we did that. I think what we are concerned about is that there are significant numbers of constituencies from one end of the state to the other who are not having their issues addressed by this governor. And many raise the issue, would the Democrats retain their majorities? And they did, and they did it resoundingly because over the past couple of months, every Democratic member in every legislative district has knocked on thousands and thousands of doors. And we know that contrary to popular belief that this is the most popular governor in a midterm that we have seen, people at the grassroots level are not pleased with the way things are going in New Jersey. And they affirm that by resoundingly returning Democrats to the control of both houses. So what you will see in the next several months is an aggressive rollout of the Democratic legislative agenda, identifying issues that are important to constituencies in this state, and we are not going to continue to allow the disrespect that this governor has directed towards our respective bodies. That is over, 
It is behind, and we are going to make certain that we continue to work on behalf of the citizens of this state, but we will do it as co-equal partners with this governor at the table. Thank you. And I would like to introduce not a stranger to anybody. And she might be a grandmother, but she can pack a punch. Uh, Where do you think I learned it? Oh, my God. <laughs> our, our, uh, our majority, leader, our new majority leader, Loretta Weinberg. Loretta. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the Senate President. I want to thank the Democratic Caucus for the confidence they have shown in our collective leadership, the Democratic caucuses on both sides of the aisle. And I will tell you that any of you in this room know that I've never been known as shy or retiring. I am going to be joining our Senate President and the leadership on the Assembly side in speaking up for the women of the state of New Jersey, for the families in the state of New Jersey, for the people who need jobs so that they can have access to health care and that they can educate their children and that they will have clean air to breathe. Those are the things that I'm going to spend my time, my energy on, and I am privileged to be in a position to do that and to do it forcefully. So again, to the Senate President, I appreciate your confidence, and particularly if I might, a moment of chauvinism, to my Bergen County colleagues, Gordon Johnson and Paul Sarlo. We're very, very proud of the clean sweep we made in the County of Bergen this year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here today in my new capacity as Majority Leader. It's been a privilege to serve this state for the last 10 years chairing the Budget Committee. I hope to bring the same passion and commitment to public policy and ideas, consensus building, and tackling the toughest problems that we face in my role as Majority Leader. Um, I'm very proud of uh, Vinnie Prieto and his willingness to jump into the role uh, as the new Budget Chair. It's a, I can tell him it is a daunting task. Uh, I will tell you that I am proud that we have two unified caucuses and we have a unified message. It is not a singular message, but a unified message, a message surrounded around the fact that people in this state are struggling and that we recognize there are problems across this state. There is not one singular solution to any problem. And the tent of the majority party is a broad tent. It is a large tent. It brings people in from all sectors, all races, all groups, men, women, minorities. We have added to our ranks in all of those sectors. And it is a reflection of the people of this state from every corner of this state. The governor took his message directly to the people in the most competitive races around this state. He took his message on the airwaves. He went to the TV. He went through mail. And he told people about his policies, many of which he exaggerated on his accomplishments. And he asked the people to join him in bringing more Republicans that thought like him. He was resoundingly rejected in every corner of the state from Cape May to Bergen County. And that is a reflection that we, as the Democratic Party, the majority party, have tackled the issues in a way that the people respect, one through consensus and compromise, one through answering the problems in more than a Band-Aid approach and a 30-second soundbite. That is the commitment that we as leaders make to you. That is the commitment that is the unified message. And that is the answer that we give to you as we address these problems. We will work together to find the best solution from the many answers that exist to attack the toughest problems. Because we do easy well. It is when the challenges are presented to you and the most difficult choices have to be made that true leaders stand up to fight those challenges head on. That's why we are proud to be here. I am proud of this team both in the Senate and the Assembly, as I look across this cross-section of people, I see so many of my friends that we served with in the Assembly and continue to look forward to working with them in their capacity and leadership in the Senate. So thank you very much. Uh, it, someone that did an outstanding job over the last two years chairing a, t a committee, it's budget and appropriations in the Senate. Very difficult. He did an outstanding job for the people of New Jersey. Our returning budget chair, Paul Sarlo. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. President, and uh, I've had the opportunity to serve uh, here in the legislature for the last 10 years, eight, eight, eight and a half of them in, in, in the Senate, and had the opportunity to chair the Labor Committee, chair the Judiciary Committee, 
uh, and for the last two years, chair of the Senate Budget and Appropriations Committee. And I think we all know here uh, that most of the difficult decisions and most of the work that we do goes through uh, the budget and appropriations process. Uh, and the last two years have been quite difficult. I want to thank our Senate President uh, for the confidence that he's given me, uh, confidence he has in me um, to do this job and, and continue uh, to fight for the residents of New Jersey. And that's all residents of New Jersey. Uh, from top to bottom, and to make sure that we continue um, to fight for the middle class. And I think it was said the best uh, by our Senate President, uh, jobs has to be one of the most important issues that we face. And as Budget Chairman, I'm going to continue uh, that good work. This year in Bergen County, that governor took his message to Network TV, spent a lot of money on Network TV, and said his policies he needs everyone to vote from the top of the ticket all the way down for the Republican Party so he could continue his policies. It was rejected soundly across Bergen County. We picked up mayors in Republican areas that we've never picked up before. Uh, his policies are not working uh, in Bergen County. We need to focus in on that unemployment, more jobs, deal with his decimating cuts to public education. So I'm so delighted to, to rejoin uh, Senate President uh, Sweeney's leadership team and I want to thank him publicly, and I pledge to him, and I pledge to all my colleagues up here. Uh, we will work day in and day out to make sure we begin to get this state back on its right foot. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Budget Chair from the Assembly, Assemblyman Vincent Prieto. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the vote of confidence in this new role that I'm excited about and being part of this team alongside with the Senate. Uh, we need to look at this. This has been a problem for the state of New Jersey that has been a marathon getting in, and nobody has been able to sprint out of it. In the last two years, we've seen a budget that has grown and actually has delivered less aid to municipalities, less aid to schools, that that in turn has raised taxes for the middle class that is unacceptable. Higher education has seen cuts. To the education of our children is tough. We need to make sure that we fund all this. And saying all that, we need to look to see that in the last two years, it's all the talk that I keep hearing is we must share the sacrifice. And the sacrifice, the lion's share of it, have been the poor and the middle class while millionaires have been able to get tax breaks, and that's unacceptable. I look forward with this new leadership and the Senate to work together to bring New Jersey to a better place. Thank you. And Senate President, if I might, I would like to call forward the Speaker Pro Temp of the Assembly, Assemblyman Jerry Green. There's more of you than us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm somewhat lost with words because of the fact that uh, overnight I'm the senior member up here. <laughs> this is going to be my 11th term. But I'm going to get right to the point. I'm so proud of Sheila. I'm proud of the fact that what she's gone through the last two years. But also I'd like to take this opportunity to tell Steve Sweeney how proud I am of him. Uh, when we talked about reform, we talked about pension, Steve, a couple of years back. We had to have 20, almost 20, I would say 50 state troopers walk us through the halls because people wanted to beat us up. So Steve was on top of this issue from day one. I'm a little upset and happy today. Happy because of the fact that the people here in the state of New Jersey have made a decision that they feel we're moving in the right direction. But at the same time, I feel we have lost two years. When it comes to housing, I put a bill on the governor's desk. He's yet to sign it. He has made it his job or his business to be embarrassing to women like our speaker and other members. And today I'm going to ask the press, when he throws a punch, call us up so we can throw a punch. Because the days of embarrassing Democrats is all over. I think the public has spoken. Today, we're going to speak. Again, Sheila has done a great job. Steve has done a great job. And I'm so proud of their leadership. But at the same time, I haven't seen anything other than lip service coming out of the front office. And unfortunately, sometimes the press feels that his word is God. But I'm hoping that you'll give our leadership an opportunity to respond. 
because whichever way he want to go, that's the way we're going to go. We're not going to be intimidated. We're not going to be threatened as a party because I feel we speak for the people here in the state of New Jersey. So again, I want to thank leadership, the new members, because I think the speaker had put together with the Senate president a team that cares about the people here in the state of New Jersey. We're going to get the job done. He talked about Obama, one term. If he don't get his, he don't get his act together, he's going to be one term. Thank you. And I, too, would just like to offer my congratulations to Speaker Oliver and her leadership team and Senate President Sweeney and his leadership team and to all the members in the General Assembly and the Senate. Uh, elections have consequences. We're here today as leadership teams because of elections that were unanimous downstairs in our respective caucus rooms. But in addition to that, we're here with an expanded majority in the Assembly, uh, 48 members of the General Assembly, and came back with 24 in the Senate. But that says one thing that the message that our colleagues gave to their districts, to their constituents, about wanting to turn this economy around and provide job opportunities for the people of the state of New Jersey, about wanting to make sure that children have access to affordable health care and that families have access to quality education, our messages that resound it with the people of the state of New Jersey, this caucus is going to be listening to those messages and acting upon them. Uh, this is going to be a different uh, caucus than you've seen in the last two years. We have a united leadership team and we're going to move forward aggressively pursuing a democratic agenda for the next two years. And if there are any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer them at this time.